Now, you know from last time, and of course, <clears throat> you know, just your own study, that Eden was a garden. That's obvious, Garden of Eden. Genesis, Ezekiel 28. There are other references to that that I'm not going to look up because, again, this is something that's fairly self-evident. But you need to think about sort of the motifs of a tropical garden. Again, an oasis garden, a paradise garden to sort of get this in your head. Not only do you have plants, but you're going to have rivers. It's going to be well watered. There's going to be, again, an abundance of plant life. So it's a very fertile place compared to the desert wilderness. This is why the land of Canaan is always described as a land, you know, flowing with milk and honey. I mean, it, there, there's abundant vegetation and not just stuff that looks nice, but there's an abundance of food source in terms of the plant, uh, the plants that are there. Again, paradise, think paradise. You never want for anything. Okay, in the garden of God, in the home of God, the abode of God, which is Eden. There are animals, again, certain animals are gonna sort of telegraph that we're in a tropical garden now, and of course, the tree of life. Eden was the place of God's abode. Even back in Genesis, God is there in human form. We looked at this the last semester, specifically Genesis 3.8, where you have the Lord God walking in the garden. Again, that's anthropomorphic language. You don't use a word like walking if the object of that term is invisible or is a spirit. And that's the kind of terminology you would use for an embodied deity. And this is what we have in Genesis. So God's presence in the form of a human, a man, was there. The tree of life, of course, is a cosmic term. It denotes sacred space. Why the tree of life? Well, because we are in God's house and where God is, he is the source of life. This is what this idea communicates to you. When you are there in that place, you are alive. And as long as you stay there, you will be living forever. There's no death in God's presence. Of course, with the fall, here comes the ruination of all that. And Eden is sort of taken off the scene for obvious reasons because death enters into the world. After the fall, the cosmic garden needs to be guarded by cherubim, okay? So we can't allow the humans back into Eden or to remain in Eden. They're expelled because now that they are cursed after the fall, we can't just have them living forever. There's a penalty for what they did, and that is death. Remember a, a couple of times, you know, that you will surely die, again, if you sin. And the point isn't that you're going to drop over dead. Rather, the point is that you are going to be expelled from God's presence. There's a separation between humanity and God at this point, and that means death. Ultimately, everything that is not in God's presence with God, being given life by God, is going to die. 